In this section, our goal is to be able to evaluate expressions for given replacement values of the expressions. Let's begin by talking about what does it mean to evaluate expressions. Evaluating expressions. To evaluate expressions, you have to substitute a number for each variable and perform the arithmetic operations. Notice the word evaluating has the word value in it. Value means a number. So our goal is to get a number instead of letters. See, evaluate value. So we want to think of a number. This is different from solve Whereas in solve, we get a number, but we also have a variable left. When it says solve, our answer is going to be x equals something. When it says evaluate, our number, our answer is going to be just a number. So solve is x equals when we have an equation. Evaluate is just a number, and that's what we're doing today. Just evaluate, and our answer is just a number. Examples, evaluate the following expressions. So we see we need a value, which is a number, and they're giving us numbers for each of the variables in the first expression. 2x squared plus 4y squared when x equals 2 and y equals negative 2. So we can write 2. Instead of x, we're going to plug in what the x equals. So we're going to put 2 there. And then it gets squared plus 4y squared. Instead of the y, we're going to put what they give us for y, which is negative 2, and then squared. Remember the order of operations, PEMDAS, we do what's in parentheses first and then the exponents. So 2 is in the parentheses and we do the exponent first. 2 squared makes 4. That's getting multiplied to 2 plus, here is another parentheses and exponent. Negative 2 is in the parentheses, and it is squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and it's getting multiplied by 4. Now we do multiply and divide in that order, whichever comes first for multiply and divide. Here we have multiply. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 4 times 4 is 16, and then now we can do add and subtract. 8 plus 16 makes 24. Notice our answer is a number, just a number. 24 is the value when we plug in these values for those variables. Now, let's check it by using the calculator. A neat feature of the graphing calculator is we can store values in for variables. So I'm going to type 2 store x, enter. Now every time I type x, it will think I mean 2. And now I'm going to store negative 2 in for y. Negative 2 store. Now there's no quick button for y, so I have to get to the y by pressing the green alpha button first. Alpha y, enter. Now I can type this expression. 2 x squared plus 4 alpha y squared, enter, and see it gives me 24. Let's try number 2. The square root of 12x squared when x equals 3. So the square root of 12 instead of x will put 3, and that 3 is getting squared. 
Remember the order of operations, parentheses, then exponents, so 3 gets squared first. 12 times 9. Now we can do multiply or divide. 12 times 9 makes 108, which is not a perfect square, so I can practice breaking down my radical. I can try some different perfect squares, and notice that 108 is divisible by 36. It's made up of 36 times 3. The square root of 36 is 6, so my answer is 6 radical 3. Let's check it out with the calculator. We'll store 3 now for x. 3, store, x, enter, and now we'll type square root of 12x squared. Square root is here in blue. Second square root of 12x squared. Now you'll notice my calculator does not give me the radical form. It says 10.392 and it keeps going. Let's jot that down, 10.4. And let's see if that's the same as our answer. 6 square root 3. And I do get the same value. But using the calculator, I can only get the decimal value. But at least I can see that my answer matches. It is approximately 10.4. So we know we did it correctly. Let's try some more. How about one with a cubed root? The cubed root of 12xy squared, let's write that down, the cubed root of 12, now instead of x, let's plug in what x equals, negative 4, and next to the x is y, that gets squared, so the y is 5, and it's getting squared. So remember our order of operations starting with parentheses and exponents, and going down. So first, parentheses, but the exponents, 5 squared first. So 12 times negative 4, 5 squared makes 25. There's nothing in the parentheses to do, so now we had to multiply and divide. 12 times negative 4 times 25. That makes negative 1,200. Let's see if there's a cubed root of 1,000, negative 1,200. Cubed root is in our math menu, the fourth choice down, negative 1,200 or 1,200. Well, there's a decimal answer for it, so I could say approximately negative 10.6. But we can probably find a cubed root that divides evenly into 1,200. The biggest cubed root I could find is 8. So 8 or negative 8 times the cubed root of 150. The cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2 with 150 left over. So either this answer, a simplified radical, or this answer, the approximated decimal, are good answers because they're both numbers and they equal the same thing. Number 4, the absolute value of x minus 8y when x equals 1 and y equals 1 half. Now it's important to know what absolute value means. The absolute value of a number is always positive. So for example, the absolute value of negative 3 will be positive 3, but the absolute value of positive 3 will also be positive 3. The absolute value makes the numbers positive.
let's go ahead and plug these in. The absolute value of, instead of x, I'll put 1, minus 8, instead of y, we'll put 1 half. Close the absolute value signs, kind of like we close parentheses. The absolute value signs are very much like parentheses because they're containing an expression. We don't have other parentheses besides what's here because nothing's happening inside those parentheses and we don't have any exponents, so we'll do multiply first. So absolute value, 1 minus 8 times 1 half or half of 8 makes 4, and now we can do add and subtract. We're subtracting 1 minus 4, that makes negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 makes 3, and here we have a value, so we know we're correct. Let's double check by using our calculator and learn where the absolute value symbols are. First, let's store 1 for x and 1 half for y. Alpha, y equals to get a fraction, enter, 1 over 2, and store alpha, y, there it is. Now let's find absolute values, that's in math. Over to number, absolute value is the first one, abs, there it is. Now I can type x minus 8y, x minus 8 alpha, y, enter, and 3 is the correct answer. Yay, we did it. One more to look at. 2x minus 3 divided by y squared when x equals 9 and y equals negative 5. So 2 instead of x, we'll put 9 minus 3 divided by y is negative 5 squared. So that makes 2 times 9 is 18 minus 3 divided by negative 5 squared makes positive 25. 18 minus 3 is 15 and 15 divided by 5, 25 can be simplified since they both are divisible by 5. So that makes three-fifths. Let's check it out with the calculator. First, we'll store our new values. 9 store x and negative 5 store y. Now, let's make a fraction. Alpha y equals enter. In the numerator is 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3 and in the denominator is y squared, alpha y squared, enter, and it shows us three-fifths, just like we got. Take a few minutes to write a short summary thinking about what you've done and watched. Explain how evaluate is different than solve. See you in class.